so yeah again so normally our celebration would have just been the first hour of class and we would have had two hours of lectures so um a lot of them i had to pre-record videos so there is right two sets of notes so the one says lecture one and the video says lecture or video one um, and that's these notes which is all about balancing equations now if you haven't watched the videos that's all right i would stay now um, this will probably take about an hour 45 minutes to do the last page of the notes but do go back um, and watch the first video the first page of your lab goes with the first video and so that is knowing how to balance equations which is the, um, the blanks uh, so that the elements are the same on both sides and we'll go through that and then doing oxidation reduction um, which is why I'm dressed like a lion in all the videos um, I did want to talk about something before I go into and then the second set of notes actually is and they say lecture two um, and that goes with video two that is on there um, which is how to write chemical equations and so it's this first page and I'm going to do the second part of that which uh, I guess has a page number page 26 and is uh, has the red ox on it so that's what we're going to be doing in a moment um, I do want to talk about class presentations oh this is my other class somebody had a bonus um, and she she turns in stuff like this for me so maybe that will inspire somebody um, but she wrote a whole cartoon on red oxes and blue oxes and fox because that rhymes like dr seuss kind of thing but your class presentations um there is a document that has been posted for a couple of weeks um in the folder that says syllabus and it talks about so you all picked an element you all have an element now if you're not sure what your element is just stay after um i i uh yeah um you can change your element if you're not happy with it but you do have to communicate with me with that uh, you are going to be writing a paper about the element it's it needs to be at least three pages so three to five pages not not too much um, double spacing is fine that's kind of um, I'm, I'm okay with double spacing uh, it was a question Michael had asked me like what size font stuff like that if you guys are using 20 fonts and there's gonna be 30 words in three pages that's not going to get full credit um, because I changed how much things were worth this your class presentation and paper together uh, they're worth like 50 points um, I, I'll let you know next week um, and I'll send out an email and what I found is uh, only about half of you seem to have ever made your Saints email work and so not everybody's getting or reading their emails um, I would suggest because we're in this environment and we're going to be like this in the winter you need to learn how your teachers communicate with you which and the school which is by the saints email um, and i would also suggest for all of you that when you do communicate with your teacher you do it in a very professional and kind way so most of you do do that and i do appreciate that um, so it is a paper that is due and a presentation so in two weeks next week we just have class Tuesday um, and we will have studies set on this uh, and then the next week is the class presentations and stuff um, and so I have noticed that on Thursday only half the students come and a couple people have told me that they work and so I actually would like to do class presentations on Tuesday um, on the syllabus it says Thursday we can finalize this on Tuesday when everybody's here um, but I want to flip-flop the 10th week and do the presentations on Tuesday which means you know over uh, Thanksgiving break most people are staying home and not doing much um, and so it just requires you to look into your elements some presentations are five minutes and we'll be doing it on zoom I'll be splitting you guys into two groups um, and so you will be present your video your cameras will be on for the entire time um, and so I won't be videotaping it so your cameras will be on and you'll be sharing your screen um, and so we'll talk about that more next week but there was somebody sent me an email um, 
worded quite interestingly, uh, but it is that these are coming up now and that's why I had you on the celebration, pick your element. So you all have an element. I would suggest starting to look into it. Um, you're just talking about um, some fun facts about it, um, maybe where it's found, some of the history. It really depends on what your element is. And you can always come and talk to me in office hours. It is much easier for me to talk than to type in emails. Um, and so taking five minutes of your time, I have a lot of office hours today. Um, with that, let's go ahead and start this. So again, I'm on what would be lecture two. And if you didn't print them, just write on a piece of paper. And again, if you haven't watched the videos, um, I've already done this with my other class last week and they actually did remarkably well um, with this um, because of the videos, I think. And um, I would stay now so you hear this and then um, I, I, will, I have a lot of office hours today. Uh, the students who've been coming to office hours definitely did better on the celebration um, than those of you who are trying to go it alone. So I do have 25 years of experience. I have been, ex my students have been extremely successful uh, in this environment. That requires you to come and participate, meaning coming to office hours. So today we'll get done at 11, stay on. Um, or if you haven't watched the videos, you're gonna have to go and do that. But this, this link will stay open until at least one. If somebody's here, I can keep it open until 1.30. Um, and then I'm back on this evening from five to seven. Um, so this is building. That's the other thing that a couple of people have asked. They're like, do we need to remember anything from celebration one or two for the next one? Uh, this is all building on all the naming and things that we did. And what we'll get into next week is bringing everything together, which is we're going to do the math that goes with chemical equations. Um, so the first <coughs> celebration was about the elements. Um, and then the second one was about putting them into compounds and now we're writing the sentences. So this is um, the, the first lecture I gave you, everything was already written out. And what we're doing with the lab is everything's gonna be in words and you have to figure out what's going on. Um, and so that's what the second video is. The third video is, uh, goes with the lab. And so I actually walked through some of the lab with you. But so some people actually did the lab and then they went back and watched the video. Um, it just, it's, it's a personal thing what order you do stuff in. But um, these are our two pieces. The and means plus. The side of the reaction is called the reactants. So those are the two things that are reacting. And then reacts means we put an arrow and we have to predict what's gonna happen. So the steps that we always do, and I'm gonna actually flip my page over and walk through the steps. I do this in the video um, on this page. And so if you've already watched the video, you probably already have this there, but it's really good to go through this and it does take practice. Um, and then you have a study set due Tuesday, uh, and then you'll have a quiz on this so that you by Tuesday fully feel you have this. Um, the lab is due by Saturday, so I give you a little bit of extra time, but um, yeah. All right, uh, the steps to follow is we need to write our reactants. Um, and this is where subscripts come in. And this would probably be one of the pieces that is most missed. Uh, the subscripts is everything that we have been learning about previously. And so this is either coming from, if it is a compound, you are figuring that out from the charges. And we'll see that um, when I go back onto that page. The other thing is if it is an element alone, um, so if it's a solo element, there are what are called the diatomics. And uh, this, it's probably one of the most missed things that students actually end up doing really well with this once you put the time in. Uh, and that's why we have so many notes this week. Um, this ends up being a big hump. And this once you put the time in, you get it and actually flows beautifully. Um, the hardest part with it 
is it's very unique to chemistry. You know, the math, math shows up in all other classes and stuff, but this balancing, writing balance equations is very uniquely chemistry. Um, but if you've been putting the time in, we just keep building on the stuff that we've been doing. Uh, the diatomics, they make a seven on the periodic table. I talked about this in the video, um, and I'm pretty sure I've talked about it previously. And so that would be nitrogen, uh, oxygen. Like you all know that since you were a little kid, oxygen's O2. And maybe you're a little kid who said why, and your parents probably didn't know why. Um, oxygen's so freaking reactive, it's never found by itself, except out in outer space, you would have the two oxygens never come near each other, so they never pair up. When it's by itself, it's always an O2. It's extremely reactive. If it's, if it's a reactant, it's gonna be what pushes the reaction. Um, and then all the halogens, because the halogens are so close to perfection that um, they always come in a pair in a, until they find something to react with. These are stable-er than if they were by themselves, but they're extremely reactive. Um, it was a question I think Spencer had asked me. So in this state, this is fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine. So it's ending with the I-N-E, the name of the element. Once they react and they're in the compound, then we would say fluoride, chloride, bromide, iodide, oxide. And that is when they're now stable because they've done the gaining and losing of electrons. Um, your teacher can count. That is six. And I said there were seven. Uh, and it does make the seven on the periodic table. Astentine, nobody picked it, but astentine is the one that's extremely reactive. You can't actually even look at it. Um, and so we won't see it because it, it's something that we as humans can't actually experiment with. I don't actually know very much about it other than that. Um, hydrogen is the other one. That hydrogen is a diatomic. That is when it is by itself. So with that, with this first step, is we write our two reactants, nitrogen would get a subscript. Um, please notice, these are non-metals. So metals are never diatomics when they're by themselves. We just write barium or iron or whatever it is reacting. Um, there are also other types. Uh, there is something called a tetratomic, which is phosphorus. That's beyond what we need to know. But I mention that because some people um, will run into that information. All right, step two is that we have to predict the reaction type. And the videos, video two, the lab video, and today, I break them into their types of reactions. So there's five types of reactions. There's many, many more. These are the only five we're gonna go through because they're ones that are very easily predicted, um, which is a combo, a decomp, combustion, single, and a double. And, and the ones we're gonna walk through together, walk through those five again. And in the lab, you do two of each of them. I do one in the video and then have you do one. Um, and then I mix them up um, on the last page. And then same with your homework, it's kind of like that. There's a page where you're balancing and doing redox, and then the last page, it's mixed up. Um, all right, the third step is that we write our product formulas. So step two is really the key. Today's not so bad because I do them in this order. Um, and then I mix them up. And so it's more when they're mixed up. It's going to be the question that comes up for the study set on Tuesday is how do I know which one I'm doing? Um, it takes practice and you just start recognizing them. So putting the time in. Um, so writing the product is, again, where we do subscripts. And the fourth step is where you would balance. And that's where the coefficients come in or the koi fish. Um, so again, apparently, if you're somebody who reads lips, however I say coefficients, it looks like I'm saying koi fish. Um, and so I had, it's, a, it's a joke that I've had with my students because somebody asked me one time why I was talking about koi fish and I didn't realize she'd been reading my lips for seven weeks, um, which fascinated me. Uh, so the last step is the redox.
the oxidation reduction. Um, and so we will do that when we get done at the end. For those of you moving on to Chem 221, um, whether it's with me or with Bernadette, who's an amazing teacher, um, so that would be a harness. So I'm teaching my sections in the evening on Tuesday and Thursday. Uh, it was a question Spencer had for me, which is we're going to be online, so it's going to be this format. The only difference is I, I moved to evening time because I found I function better in the evening and I found my students also function better in the evening. There seems to be less distractions of the day. Um, but if you're like, I don't want any interaction with my teacher, there is a completely web-based one and you won't have any interaction. So I personally need interaction with my students. And so um, that's why I moved to an evening time. Um, we will be adding more steps in 221, which is states of matter. So we don't worry about solid liquid gas in this class. Um, and we also look at net ionics and stuff. So this keeps building on it. But if, if you've done this class, this gives you a really good foundation. Um, so 221 ends up moving really smoothly. Um, so you will be very grateful. Um, and those of you who this is just a science um, class, then you get this, this will help you with, I'm sure, everything in life. All right, this is a combo. So the type of reaction is a combo, and uh, they're just going to combine. And so the way you recognize a combination, <clears throat> if you have a metal plus a non-metal, it's what we did for the past month. Metal and non-metal, we bring them together. But when we bring them together, <clears throat> this is where we look at the periodic table and we say, okay, there's barium. It's a 2A, it's an earth metal. So it's going to be a plus two. And then nitrogen, it's a negative three. So your periodic table, it really should be like your best friend. It needs to be there to do this lab um, because you have to have the charges. When they are by themselves, if you watch the first video and then the second and then the third, and you can sing along with me, my other class does, uh, by themselves, put the halo there. So, ah, you can sing as you put the halo. Um, it does, it helps you to smile. Um, my other two classes are actually doing the Giggle Jiggle Lab for this week. We should probably do that with you guys too. Um, but that is actually another common mistake as students try to put charges over here when they're by themselves. And that's the whole point, why they reacted, because they don't have a charge. They're not in a stable form yet. The only thing that's stable as a zero is the noble gases. So by themselves, they're zero and they reacted to form a compound. Now, if these numbers are not the same, this is why we did all that stuff writing chemical um, formulas, is we would get three bariums and two nitrogens. And so we crisscross. That crisscross works beautifully. Um, and so for those of you, who have put the time in, that is something we just keep building on. So you have to get the subscripts first before you worry about balancing your equation. Here we go. And so once you have your subscripts, then you can go through, and this is what our, my first video is about. Sorry, I was trying to find my pen. Um, and so then you can put, uh, the little blanks. You don't have to put the blanks. Um, I had a student who had been a kindergarten teacher who showed me this uh, like 20 years ago, and it, it really helps a lot of students. So you first do the subscripts. The subscripts are coming from the charges, or if they're by themselves, give them halos, and now we're going to balance. We have to have conservation of matter. We have to have the same number on each side. Now, you can make a list. A lot of people want to do lists, but that's, that's really time consuming. Um, and so you want to get to the point where you can look at the whole thing and you can see, well, I need three bariums because I have that subscript three. And so this is where we put the number in front with the three. So we have three bariums. And over here, when it combines, the three becomes a subscript. And then the nitrogen, well, I have two on both sides, so we're good. This is something else I talk about in the very first video. This is how it would typically be written. So we would just show the three in front of the barium. 
However, in this class, there are some of you who need a number in front of everything. And if that's you, that's fine. Uh, you can absolutely put in number one. So the coefficients are 3, 1, 1. Um, and that is perfectly fine. Uh, I have no problem with the one. My son right now is taking chemistry with another teacher. And he sat in on my class last year. And he visually was somebody who needed the ones. I personally don't need the ones, but he did. Uh, and he put a one there in his class and his teacher marked it wrong. So I mentioned that because some of you are going to switch to another teacher or take chemistry at some other time. Um, a lot of people don't like the ones. Um, so anyway, in here you can. I have no problem with that. All right, this was a combo, and our equation is balanced. And we'll do the Leo Gur at the end. You can keep just keep going unless somebody has a question. All right. So the next one, it actually tells you right in the question, it's a decomp. So decomps pretty much always say, hey, this is going to be a decomp. So that is our type of equation. This is a combination. So a combination, you get one product. And in a decomp, you have one reactant. So they're kind of opposites. The decomps, um, I have to tell you what's going to happen because that requires somebody to have done some experimentation with it. The other way a decomp would be written out, would it would say that something breaks apart. So it is a compound, in this case, potassium chlorate. So chlorate. That eight ending means we look at our polyatomics. So there's our chlorate. And if you want, you can put a parenthesis. Chlorate has a minus one and potassium has a plus one. So we don't need a subscript. Again, this is something where I think the parentheses can really be helpful for students. But technically, this one's not supposed to have a parentheses because there's only one. It doesn't really matter on this one. All right, and so this two means the arrow. Uh, it breaks into potassium chloride and oxygen. So the mistake students make on this one is they break it into potassium plus chlorine plus oxygen. If it broke into each separate element, there would be a comma, and there's no comma between potassium and chloride. This is saying it's one compound, so potassium chloride. The ending, remember how we emphasized the ending? That means there's no oxygen. It kicked the oxygen out because the oxygen was over greedy. And so it's a compound. When we have a compound, we have to look at or at, um, sorry, at charges. So potassium's a 1A, chlorine's over there, it's a negative one. So we don't need a subscript. And means plus oxygen. The other thing I would tell you as you're writing equations is to make sure you always give yourself space so you can write your um, coefficients in front. Do this with pencil or you can use a pen. My other class, they've all bought colored pens that are erasable. You can find them on Amazon. They're amazing. And the students who started using color, they do are doing phenomenal in the class. So it is a huge learning thing because we're very visual. Oxygen by itself is a diatomic. In the compound, it's whatever it needs to be to be chlorate. So we have our subscripts that is based on how it's worded. Now we do the coefficients. So it's a big picture thing. I look at it and right off I see three oxygens and two oxygens. It's a lowest common number thing. You're going to go to six. So six would mean I have to put a two here. You can't put a two. You can't change anything about the formula. You have to put a two in front of the whole thing and a three here. That gives me six oxygens. So two times three, three times two. But now I have two Ks and two CLs. So I just have to put a two there. So in this case, everything gets a coefficient. So two, two, and three. All right. Um, I didn't put a charge above the oxygen. I recommend you put your little halo. Uh, please do notice when I put charges, I put them up above. I'm not putting them down in the formula. So they're making it really messy and hard for you to read, let alone me reading it. 
Um, so it's about communication, showing it clearly. So leave your charges up here because we're going to need them when we do the Leo Gur. And putting the little halo, that will help you also to know you're not dealing with a charge. All right, the next type is combustion. So that it will tell you combust. Um, what's the other, what, what does combustion mean? Burn. It means to burn, yeah. Is that Tim? Or was that? It's Damon. Oh, it's Damon. There we go. I yeah, it's it's interesting because for some reason Zoom doesn't show me who's talking ever. Um, so for some reason, yeah. Uh, all right. So combustion means burning. Uh, so propane C three H eight, and to combust or burn means plus O two. So for anything to burn, you have to have oxygen, right? That's how we snuff candles. And combustions, it's a type of reaction is combustion. Um, the carbon and oxygen is what drives this because it has a halo and it doesn't want to be a halo. It's going to react with the carbon and it forms CO2. That's why we've generated so much CO2 in this uh, over the past 150 years. And the hydrogen and oxygen combine to form the perfect molecule. Um, the thing that's fascinating about the combustion age is we're really imitating what's going on in us. It's just in us, it's like a 20, 30 step reaction. It's very elegant, but we breathe out the CO2 um, and then pee out or sweat out or use the H2O. Um, so in our body, it's more the H2O that combines funky. Um, so oxygen is what drives our life. It's the, um, it wants the electrons from our food. And so our food just has to be carbon based. And that's why people can eat crappy food and still stay alive. They're just not healthy. Um, so that's it. Combustion always looks like that. These are the easiest ones because it's always plus oxygen and you get CO2 and H2O. So now we just have to balance it. Um, so just make sure you leave the space. All right. So carbon, three carbons. So over here, we need three CO2s. Hydrogen, we have eight. So we're going to need four because it's four times the two. So the trick on this one is the oxygen. Um, over here, you have six plus four oxygen, you have 10. So you have oxygen everywhere. So you have three times the two, which is six. And here you have four waters and each water has just one oxygen. So we have 10 total. So on this side, to get to 10, we would put a five here. So five times the two would give us 10 oxygens and we're balanced and that's it. And again, if you need the one here, you can put the one, you do not have to. And again, if you take a different person's class, don't put the one. Um, I, yeah, chemists are interesting people, I've learned. Um, I'm not actually a chemist. It's amazing they allow me to teach this. But um, yeah, they made me re-interview re for my job after a year because I was not a chemist. Um, I'm a biochemist, and so apparently makes me something special or different. Makes me special, like all of you. Every one of us is special. All right, uh, extra words, find the words that matter. So aluminum, it's just saying it's aluminum in its solid form, meaning it has a halo. Uh, and it's dropped in, meaning it's gonna react with sulfuric acid. And if you ever read any of my stories, aluminum and sulfuric acid, oh, they react. Um, aluminum is actually, Afraid of sulfuric acid. So as an acid, ick means it was eight. You can show parentheses, you don't have to. Uh, it is H2SO4. So for those of you who sincerely figure out the formulas, that's how it is. And for those of you who Google, you know, God bless you. You're going to be scrambling trying to figure this out and spending a lot of time, um, especially when Google gives wrong answers a lot but uh, we need two hydrogens in sulfuric acid to balance the negative two charge. 
acids are not ionic compounds. Uh, they require the reaction, um, whether it's in the water, to pull the hydrogen off. All right, this is, a, this is an exchange type of reaction, and so you can call it a single replacement, uh, a single exchange. You don't want to just call it exchange because we're going to have the other type down here. So I just call it a single, and you're going to recognize it because you're going to have an element plus a compound. So on the combo, we had an element plus an element. So all you could do is bring them together. This one's different. There's three pieces. We did not do anything where we put three pieces together. Um, so don't start doing things now that we did not do previously in the past two months that we've been together. Um, in nature, of course, there's very complex compounds, but we're keeping it simple. So the aluminum and the hydrogen are going to swap places. That's the other thing. So even though hydrogen is a nonmetal, we show it on the metal side of the periodic table because it actually behaves like a metal. It behaves, um, it, it doesn't combine with the metals in nature. It does, man has made compounds in which hydrogen combines with the metal. They're reactive and useful in that way. Um, but that's not going to happen here in our labs. So the aluminum, the hydrogen is now going to be by itself, and the aluminum is with the sulfate. So um, they're two separate things, so don't put them together. Don't put metals together. We, have, we are not doing metallurgy. Uh, and don't put non-metals together unless I tell you to in a compound, and then I would have to tell you the compound. So it's still what we were doing. And the thing that's really nice in these exchange reactions, which is um, these last two, the ox, is the polyatomic moves as a polyatomic. So the SO4, and that's why the parentheses are really nice, the SO4 moves with it. The only tricky ones with the polyatomics are the decompositions because in a decomp it breaks apart and so the polyatomic is going to break apart because um, something wasn't quite right. All right, we have to do subscripts before we try to balance. Hydrogen by itself is a diatomic. And it gets a halo because ah, it's by itself. All right, aluminum is a plus three and sulfate is a minus two. So again, Writing your polyatomics so they're there. We're not going to go in. There's, again, huge lists of polyatomics. We're going to stick with this simple list that I've been sticking to. Aluminum is a plus three. It's in the three to get back to neon. All right. Um, these charges are not the same, which means we crisscross. So two aluminums and three sulfates. You got to get your subscripts first before you do the coefficients. All right. And now we're ready. Feel good with the subscripts. When you are writing your equations, what the lab is about, um, and I, I sincerely would recommend that you find the time, that you take the deep breath, and come to my office hours um, and work on at least one page of the lab. Um, because again, the students who have been or work on it and then come back to my office hours. Um, but if nobody's there at one o'clock, I'm going to close the office hour and go do sit in the sunshine, just like the rest of you. I do have an office hour on Saturday morning also. Um, in my other class, that's usually in there very busy. They don't have a big assignment this week, so it'll probably be pretty open. Um, and so coming in would be lovely. Uh, I just look at my two sides and I see my aluminum, the subscript two. You can't put a subscript over here. You put a coefficient in front. So that gives me two aluminums and I have three SO4s. So I'm going to have to put a three here. I can't put a subscript three because that would not balance the charge. That gives me six hydrogens. So now I just put a three there. So I get two, three, three, one. And again, you can put the one there or you can just leave it blank or you don't even have to show the blank. The most common question I get with this 
is a student will say, but I wrote it like this. I said aluminum sulfate plus three hydrogens. Is that okay? Absolutely. It doesn't matter the order you wrote your products in. It does matter that you put them together correctly. So the hydrogen is alone. It's a diatomic, so you have three of them. And the aluminum sulfate will be in that ratio. We show the metal before the non-metal. What would be wrong is to try to make this a combo. So again, don't combine three things. If you see three pieces, there's going to be a switching that happens. All right, we got one more. And these end up being uh, students tend to do really well at these. And, and my theory is actually, I mean, one, I think they are the easiest ones. But I think it's by the time you get to this on the lab and the homework, you've um, put some time in by doing the other ones. And so you're starting to get the flow. So this is extra information. You can ignore that or just underline. We have sodium phosphate and means plus nickel to nitrate. Mixed means reacts. So that means arrow. We're going to have the arrow. So we have to write our formulas now. So underlining. Um, and again, it's, it's these words, how to put them into a sentence. Because the symbols, that's why math and chemistry are so beautiful. All right, so sodium phosphate. There is no comma there, so it's saying we have a compound. The 8 means it's a polyatomic, and so that is PO4 from our polyatomic. PO4 has a negative 3, and sodium, just take a quick look at your periodic table that's there to make sure, yep, that's a plus 1, and the phosphate's a minus 3. I personally like to do the subscripts as I go along. That's just how my personality is. I have some students who write everything out, and then they go back and do their subscripts. Um, it doesn't matter, but we're going to need the three there. All right, and means plus. So the two, that's a question on your celebration. Um, the two means nickel has a plus two. You don't have two nickels, it means it has a plus two. So please notice, I'm putting my charges up above. I'm not down in my compound, I'm not making it so I can't tell the difference between subscripts and stuff. I just have them up above so I can see what's going on. And nitrate, so nitrate is um, NO3. We're gonna see nitrate shows up a lot, um, especially in 221. Uh, so that was, I talked about Nick the Camel. Uh, nitrate's a very useful polyatomic because it in these switching places ones. So nitrate has a negative one. So this two from the nickel is going to mean I have two nitrates in this reaction and then they react. All right, this type of reaction, this is a double. Double displacement, I joke call it the swingers because they're going to switch partners. Um, but it's a double because they're both compounds. So it's compound plus compound. This is all also that first page of the lab has this, but it really, it just takes practice. Um, sorry, the first page of my writing on the lab. The first page of your lab, you have to balance equations and, and do some practice. That's the very first video uh, to give you practice. And then, all right, so we're going to switch partners. So there's four, they, they come in with one partner, and they're going to end with a new partner. So the sodium, we bring the sodium over. You do not bring subscripts over. Um, the subscripts come from the charges. You do bring its charge over. And that is why for some students, they like to swap and then do all the subscripts at the end. So you can do it that way. Um, the sodium is going to partner with the nitrate. So we always put a positive with the negative. So the NO3 comes across as NO3. And again, you don't have to put a parenthesis, but I have found for a lot of students, the NO3 moves as a package. So its subscript 3 is part of the NO3. I'm not bringing the 2 over. In fact, I don't need a subscript on this one because they both have a plus one, minus one. So they're balanced how they are. Um, all right, and then you always start with the cation. So when we wrote our chemical formulas, it's always cation before anion. 
so nickel and then phosphate. Um, they bring their charges over, and we have different charges. So twos and threes, we're going to swap them. So we're going to have three nickels and two phosphates. And so it's a double. Uh, it's the biggest question students have is how can I recognize it? You, you have to do the practice. And you're going to know double students just see them because you have compound compounds. You're going to switch. Um, always metal before non-metal. So they just switch partners. So the first one always goes with the last one, and the two in the middle will go together. But when the two in the middle come together, you have to put the cation first. So we put the nickel first, and we figure out the subscripts from the charges. So I do actually recommend you do show your charges, but again, we're showing them up above. All right, now we have to balance. And again, you don't need to do a list. You can do this without a list. If you have trouble balancing, go back and look at your charges, see if you got your charges right. They keep their charges on both sides. Um, and we'll start with the sodium. So actually, if you start with the sodium, and you can, because we can go back and erase. I have three sodiums, so over here I need three. And then I get to the PO4. So don't balance it as P's and O's. It, it was PO4 on both sides. I have two. So here I need two. That means I change my sodium to a six, and we can do that. So I have six sodiums, I have two PO4s, I have three nickels, so I need a three here. That gives me three nickels and six nitrates. And that's it. We get a two, three, six, and this would be a one if we want to show a number there. Um, and that's writing them. It's magic. And so once you go through the lab, you can go back, um, and this should start making sense. And just taking that deep breath and coming to an office hour, you don't have to stay for two hours. You can just come for, you can work on it and come in and say, hey, can I share my screen? So like what I'm doing and I being able to look at what you're doing um, is going to be necessary for me to be able to give you feedback. So the reaction type on this page and on the previous page, I went in order of them um, because it's the teaching. So it was a combo, a decomp, a combustion, which is burning, a single replacement, or we'll just say single and a double, or DD. Um, all right. Any questions before we do the Leoger? So doubles are always the no. They are not, they're the blue ox. So we should do it in blue. And that is, the others are yes. If you have a halo, red ox means you have a halo. Somewhere, you have a zero. And that's what the whole cartoon was about. We looking for the halos and yeah. You can do lots of fun rhymes. Um, Apparently, if you have a halo, you can sing karaoke, too. But that was my joke that they're a blue ox um, because they just switch partners. But if you look, their oxidation numbers stay the same. The sodium's still a plus one. The phosphate's still a negative three. The nickel's still a plus two. So you don't fill in anything for the rest of it. You leave them blank, or you can draw a blue ox, or you can draw a rainbow. I saw a double rainbow Tuesday after our class was over. Um, you know, in my other class, I have six hours straight through of class. And then I went outside for a break to meditate, and it started raining, and the sun was out. And so I turned around, like I talked about in that one video, and I got, there was a double rainbow, and it was amazing. The one rainbow was so huge and so bright, seeing the colors were so distinguished. And then the second rainbow is always flipped. All right, the others are all yes. Singles are always a red ox and combustion. That's what it means to be single, that somebody's a halo, somebody's solo. Combustion, you always have oxygen. Combos and decomps, the ones I did here are yes, because I wanted to do Leo Gurr. Um, they are not always. They are usually, but not always, whereas the combustions and singles are. 
If you have an element by itself on either side, if you have a halo, it's yes. So red ox, shred it in red, uh, gets a halo, so you have a yes. So we're gonna go through it. Um, I had, Dr. Russell actually showed me the little acronym of LEOGER, and I highly recommend the students who write out the LEOGER. So traditionally, my Chem 104 class is really good. They just follow along and they get this. And there's something about this morning class um, that half of you like say, okay, I'm gonna write it out. And half of you go, oh, I get this. It looks so simple. Of course it should look simple. Your teachers should know what she's doing. Um, the ones who write it out. So Leo means losing electrons is oxidation. Anytime something loses electrons, it's oxidized. And GER is gaining electrons. So in the boxes down here, I was really nice. The element that oxidized, that is what in my chart is the LEO. The element that's reduced is the GER. Um, and then the oxidizing agent is the OA and the reducing agent is the RA. So on the notes, I wrote that there in the box that eventually disappears and you just have to know that Leo is your oxidized box. Um, so the barium, it is always reading the arrow is moving forward. So the arrow is saying the barium is going from a zero to a plus two. That's what we learned about a month ago. That plus two means it lost electrons. So barium is my Leo and nitrogen negative three means it gained three electrons. The coefficients have no impact at all on Leo Gur. So you get to a point where you ignore them. It's all about these numbers up above, which are called oxidation numbers. We've been calling them charges and halos, um, but they're oxidation numbers. There is another trick with this, is the one that's oxidized, its oxidation number always goes up. So if you think of like a thermometer, the barium's going from a zero to a plus two, its oxidation number went up, and that's because you're losing negatives. So if you lose a negative, you become more positive. Um, so that's the idea. I then, to be consistent, I always crisscross. I always write my O on top and my reducing on the bottom. So the oxidizing agent is the one that causes oxidation. So the oxidizing agent causes something to lose electrons. So by causing something, that means it gains electrons. So your GER is always your oxidizing agent. And so my GER is my nitrogen. So my nitrogen is my oxidizing agent and my LEO is um, barium. So that's my reducing agent. Your oxidizing agent, reducing agent must be a reactant. It is something that is causing this to happen. Chemical equations, are from reactants to products. And I give you guys lots of space to write and then I'm used to writing on the board. So I tend to write really big on my paper, which is amusing to me. Um, so it's just perpetuating the myth of cause and effect. Um, that's a whole nother story. But the nitrogen, so that's why now I write it as N2 because it's how it appears as a reactant. So now we have to go down and fill it in correctly that Leo is barium oxidized, nitrogen is GER. So my GER is going to be my oxidizing agent N2, and my reducing agent is the barium. Um, I recommend you do your Leo GERs, and then when you get done, you fill in your chart. The other comment I will make is students get really excited to do their Leo GER, and they forget to balance the equations. So make sure you balance take a deep breath, and then do your Leo GER. All right, so uh, to figure out the subscripts, we had to do all of those numbers. So that helps us to figure this out. Um, I do this crisscross. It also makes it that I'm never writing anything in the middle. I write what's oxidized before in my GER. Um, I always have to write this down. It's like when I'm writing my answer key for a quiz, I have to do this. Um, 
and I'm amazed at students who don't, who just look at it and then they're like, I I'm having trouble. Sit down and write this acronym down. So you're Leo, and then look at your equation. So start with potassium. Potassium was a plus one and it's still a plus one. It did not change. Potassium is neither your Leo nor your GER. It is something called a spectator. It's there. It's kind of like all, I, well, you guys are not. Hopefully you're actively taking notes because uh, you're a student in the class, but be if somebody was just here, like my dean was just observing and um, yeah, he would just be like a spectator watching. All right, or we could have the gnome that's sitting here watching me or there's the, she lost the leg, I dropped her. Um, and so she's, she's being nourished. Um, I found the leg in a pocket and somebody's promised to put it back on her one of these days. All right, the oxygen ends up at zero. So this is a tough one. Decomps are the hardest ones for some, for a lot of students with Leo Gur. Is this negative one was for the ClO3. When you do Leo Gur, it's each element we have to look at. So oxygen's the greedy one. In a compound, oxygen gets to be the negative two. The one that is greedier is going to be the negative, is going to be its normal oxidation number. Fluorine is the greediest of them all, and fluorine and oxygen in nature, they don't combine ever. Of course, we've made it into a compound that's extremely toxic, extremely reactive, um, and then becomes a super fun site. So the oxygen gets to be the negative two. That means we can actually figure this out without doing the chlorine. I am going to do the chlorine, but this is something that you have to accept Unless I'm asking you specifically for the oxidation number, you don't need every little detail to figure it out. My oxygen was really greedy. It was negative two. It got kicked out. It's now back to being a zero. So negative two to a zero means it actually is losing electrons. It had extra electrons. Now it's back to where it started. My GER must be the chlorine because it's not the potassium and it's not the oxygen. And so recognize you don't need every piece to get it. Um, my oxidizing agent is how the chlorine started. It started as KClO3. My reducing agent is how the oxygen started. It started as KClO3. This is a double agent. So that was, I had a student who made that joke and it's a wonderful, it actually helps a lot of students. In a decomp, you only have one thing to start with. So it acts as both your oxidizing agent and your reducing agent. Uh, just for, yeah, I have time. Um, a learning tool, if you wanna figure out the chlorine's oxidation number, cause you are asked on your study set for Tuesday to do oxidation numbers. And I talk about it um, in the first video, because it's such an important concept. It's what drives life. It's what makes people sick. Um, it's, it's extremely important, uh, is this would be my oxidation numbers. I have to ignore my negative one or erase it. So these are your oxidation numbers. And down below is where I do the math. And you guys have an advantage. My art class did this. I can tell you the mistake or I'm reminded of the mistake is students decide to take shortcuts and they never write the oxidation numbers. They write their math up here and then they confuse themselves. Um, <clears throat> so this was a thing I learned from a book where they do the oxidation numbers above and the math down below and it helps to keep the confusion. Again, you don't have to do the oxidation number, the chlorine to have figured out by deductive reasoning. The, car the potassium's plus one. When I add up all my oxidation numbers, they have to balance out. <clears throat> Overall, my compound is neutral. And so it's the monkey in the middle. It's figuring out. My monkey's up there now. I don't know if you can see him. He's up there hanging out, the monkey in the middle. Um, so the chlorine must be a plus five. That's a huge number. It doesn't make sense. It's like, it's just, that's the thing the students say to me. I, I don't understand. How can it be a plus five? That is the whole point of oxidation numbers. It doesn't make sense. That's why it reacted. 
that chlorine is way too big of a number. It reacts, it's now golden, it's at a negative one. These are not charges. This is not ionic charges, which you just did on your celebration, what we just spent the last month doing. This is an oxidation potential. A number that large means it has a huge oxidation potential. All right, um, on the next one, find your halo. And then oxygen, it likes to be greedy. It goes to negative two, do your Leo Gur. And so this time oxygen gets to gain. It is our gaining. And so it is our oxidizing agent. This is where all the terminology came from, is that oxygen, if it is on the reactant side, is O2, it is your oxidizing agent. Um, so we just have to figure out our GER. But if oxygen is my oxidizing agent, the C3H8 must be my reducing agent. Because we have a, and so we have to figure out what in the C3H8 went through oxidation. So hydrogens like to be plus one. If they're in compounds, they're plus one. Again, it's why we show them with the alkali metals, even though it's not an alkali metal. In a compound, it's not a charge. Its oxidation state is positive. In this compound also, it's positive. Now without figuring out carbon, carbon must be negative here because it's with the hydrogen. And over here, it must be positive. So if it's going from a negative to a positive, the carbon is my Leo. I mention this again because some of you obsess about getting dwelling on every oxidation, every detail, and you don't need every detail. Sometimes for some of you, it's actually really good to let go of the details, get the big picture, and move on. My hands are stained with cherries because I made a cherry smoothie today. Um, I do want to do the oxidation numbers just because that's what we're learning. And on the CO2, it's pretty straightforward. If the oxygen is negative 2, the carbon is 4. Again, it's an oxidation state. 4 makes sense for CO2 because it's in the 4 group. And that's why CO2 is such a stable compound. Um, carbon goes all over the place with oxidation numbers, and it's the change in oxidation number that drives this re equation. So if we have eight hydrogens, that's a plus eight. That means my carbons have to balance that with a negative eight, but you have to divide that negative by the three carbons. That means the oxidation number for each one of those carbons is negative eight-thirds, which is like, whoa, what did she just do? Oxidation numbers are not charges. Kind of feel like a broken record here. They are a potential for change. They can be positive. They can be negative. They can be zero. They can be fractions. They are not gaining a whole electron. They're just showing you the potential for a change. So this has negative and goes to positive. It definitely has a potential for change. The amount of change tells us how much energy we will get out of it. All right, so we can go and fill in our chart. This was carbon, oxygen, O2, and the C3H8. And for the one above it, oxygen was my Leo, chlorine was my Ger, and the potassium chlorate was my agent. So, just so you have completion. And now we had to do the single. So we're almost done. Uh, we actually figured out everything about the single. So this should be pretty straightforward. We're going to write Leo Gur though. We're going to take a deep breath. It's very meditative because you're going to keep taking nice deep breaths. Slow yourself down. My aluminum halo. Remember the halo. By itself, it's zero. Plus three means it lost electrons. So the aluminum is my Leo. That means it is my reducing agent. 
So we can go down here, fill that in. Aluminum is my Leo. Aluminum is my reducing agent. All right, now we just had to figure out the GER. So it's the other one with the halo. So hydrogen, GER, oxidation number drops. So moving forward, we had a plus one, and now the temperature drops to zero or the oxidation number. So hydrogen is my GER. The SO4 is a spectator, just switch partners. So my oxidizing agent is the whole compound, so the H2SO4. So hydrogen gained electrons uh, and H2SO4 act as the oxidizing agent. The last one, we just leave them blank. A reminder, do not fill in Na, not applicable. That drives all chemistry teachers crazy because Na means sodium. Um, you can draw a beautiful picture or just leave it blank or you can draw hearts um, or you can draw a blue ox. Is there any questions? All right, I did, your, your uh, celebrations are graded. You can go and look at them. Again, I apologize, my handwriting's not great, but I do have lots of office hours today. So you can come to office hours today or next week if you have a question or can't read something. Uh, and next week we'll talk about, I have to stop recording somehow, um, your presentations, which are in two weeks. So start looking into your element.